Hello friends, it's been a long time since we've been together and I completely miss you. You have probably heard that the White House and the Center for Disease Control would like the public to start wearing masks. It would seem that everyone from area crafters to even the United States military has gone into the business of making masks for people in the public. But how about you? Could you make a mask? If you're wondering why we need one, watch this quick video and see how far the droplets from a cough can travel. In response to this challenge, I went into the art room supply cabinet to see what we could come up with as a way to make masks for ourselves. After a little experimentation, I realized it just takes a few simple ingredients to make a simple mask that we can sew together today. First, I discovered these wonderful jersey loops. These loops are what are used on little simple looms to make things like pot holders. We have hundreds of them. They're elastic and they would be perfect for wrapping around our ears. Next is a simple square of fabric, two pins, a needle, and a small spool of thread. These little squares of fabric are about 10 inches by 10 inches, some are 9 by 9. It's somewhere in that area. It doesn't need to be perfect. Here's an example of some kits that have been prepared. Each kit makes two masks. First we're going to start out by laying out our fabric and we're going to put our little jersey loops in the corner. They're going to kind of look like ears. And then we're going to fold the corners over and put a little stick pin in them. Watch this quick video clip so you can see how I do it. Next, once we get both jersey loops clipped in, we're going to fold the top down so it's kind of going to look like an envelope. Next, I'm going to take out my needle and thread and I'm going to take one end of the thread and I'm going to stick it through the eye of the needle. Once I get it through the eye, I'm going to pull about an arm's length worth of thread and I'm going to join it up with the other side of the thread and you know obviously you can use scissors but I'm going to show you how to do it without scissors. I'm just going to tear it off. Okay quick lesson in knots. You know that if you don't make a knot in the end of the thread you're going to pull it through and uh, it's not going to stop. So you're going to have to make a knot to stop it. The way that my mama told me to do it was wet your fingers, wrap the thread around your fingers a little bit and then you're going to slowly roll it off the end of your finger and then just pull it tight. And as you'll see, you'll get a little itty bitty knot that's just the perfect size. Okay, so it's totally time to sew. What we're going to do is we're going to take out our pin and we're going to join up the little corner with uh, the upper part of that envelope flap. And we're just going to start sewing. So we're just going to stick the needle, join those two pieces of fabric together. You don't need to worry at all at, about how your stitches look because guess what? We're going to turn this fabric inside out when we're done. So as you can see, I'm just, you know, sticking the needle through one side, joining it with the other side pulling it tight, spacing them in neat stitches or a close close enough together so that so that there aren't any holes. And once I get to the end of my fabric, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to make a knot. When I'm done with one side, I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. And then when you're all finished knotting off that little section of stitches, you can go ahead and join the two triangles together, the one on top and the one on bottom, kind of even them out and then put a stick pin through it just like that, like that. 
So we're halfway there. So one of the first things that we have to do is, of course, ready our needle again, take the thread, stick it through the eye, pull the thread all the way through, line up the ends, make a knot on the end, just like we did before. And now we're going to start stitching where we left off. And we're just going to start joining that fabric together, making uh, simple stitches going all the way across on one side to where the little triangle is or to the corner. And then we're going to round the corner and make those same stitches going all the way over to the other stitching uh, near our ear loop. So let's just uh, watch how that's done for just a moment. Okay, so now that we're done stitching all the way around, of course, we're going to put a little knot in it. This is an old-fashioned knot where you just make a little loop and then stick the needle through the loop and just push down on it so that the knot is uh, tied close to the fabric. I like to make three or four of them just, just to be on the safe side. And here we go. Now it's time to turn our mask inside out. So we're going to um, start at one of the ear loops, doesn't matter which side, and very slowly we're going to push in on the fabric and so that the fabric on the inside comes to the outside. And we're just going to watch this happen for a moment. Now this mask is just fine the way it is, but you know what, it's not so bad to finish stitching up the fabric around the ear loops. You know, just if you're one of those people that likes things to be complete, you can go ahead and do that.
So there's one last fussy little detail after you finish stitching up the other side of the fabric around the other ear loop. Then you just have to test the ear loops themselves to see if they actually fit around your ears. If they're too long, well, guess what? You just tie a little knot in them um, on both sides uh, to adjust the fit around your ears. These were a little too big because obviously jersey loops come in all sizes, uh, not necessarily the size perfect for your earlobe. So all you got to do is tie a knot on both sides and bam, you're ready. So the overall goal of this video was not to create a runoff on uh, jersey loops at the craft store. Obviously the goal is to look and see what you have around the house. It could be a bandana, it could be hair binders, it could be anything and see what you can make out of it. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope you know that uh, I want you to be safe. I miss you. And I can't wait uh, for you to be back in art class. Catch you later.